All right. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for joining me. I know I'm a few minutes late, so thank you for sticking around and for your patience. Uh, we're all having a day. So um, anyway, we're going to talk about episode eight of Star Trek Discovery. Hey, Z Dan, thanks for joining. I hope this um, time is a little more accommodating to you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we have a lot to talk about from this previous uh, episode. Um, Overall, though, I really enjoyed it. I just want to say, like, especially being a, an original series fan as well, I thought they did a really good job. Oh, it's still 1am. Sorry. <laughs> um, it's not 1am here. Um, I thought they did a really good job. It felt like an original series episode. It was really fun. It was exciting. Um, and yeah, it, uh, it was awesome. Um, so before I get started, I want to say happy N7 day. I'm rocking my shepherd. Don't have time to play Mass Effect all day because adult, which makes me sad, but that's okay. Um, and yeah, we're going to talk mostly today about the difference between electromagnetic waves and sound waves because that's a thing that we need to discuss. Um, and we are going to talk about uh, resonance and um, crystals and using sonar and radar and invisibility cloaks. So let's just jump straight in. Um, yeah, so starts out, we've got Klingons, we've got Klingons, and um, they are doing their thing. And um, the issue, as has always been an issue, is that we are unable to detect cloak Klingon ships. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> Thanks, C Dan. Um, so, cloaked Klingon ships are a thing, and cloaking technology is a thing that's mentioned in Star Trek all the time. And so, it's something that I definitely want to discuss because um, I feel like it's one of those technologies that scientists who are Trekkies have always wanted to be able to achieve. And so, when we talk about um, some of that technology, like I'm still convinced the data pad in the original um, Amazon Kindle, or I'm sorry, the original Amazon Kindle is basically based on a data pad because it's exactly the same size. Just saying, putting that out there, flip phones, communicators, just like that, cloaking technology. We're trying to find ways we can do cloaking technology. Um, not easy. And there are some scientists in Rochester, I want to say, who have done some pretty cool stuff using optical lab benches and having an object in the middle and bending light waves all the way around it in all directions. But with the caveat that you have to continue looking down one direction the entire time. You can't sort of have this omnipresent cloaking technology available, which is sad, but you know, valid, that's a thing. Um, so with the Klingons, we're trying to detect them when they're cloaked. And one of the things that they say, the whole kickoff to this story in the episode is that um, they want to find a way to detect the cloaked Klingon ships, as do we all. That's always been a thing. And so they think that they can go to this planet Pavo and try to develop new or try to acquire um, and utilize this giant crystal transmitter in order to detect the cloaked ships. Yeah, we'll talk about that. That's fine. <laughs> um, so first, I feel like we need to discuss some science because that's why we're here. As in, in addition to freaking out about Star Trek, um, science is a thing. And I think what they're trying to go with is this idea of sonar, that you use sound waves in order to bounce off objects so you can detect them, which would make sense, right? If you are able to bounce waves off of a Klingon ship that would somehow reflect back, that would allow you to find it, then that's great. One problem. And Zidane nailed it because air. <laughs> uh, for the most part, this episode kind of almost got, they almost got away with it. And then at the end, I will point out the one line that caused them to not get away with it. But they uh, almost did. So the problem is, is that if you want to use this technique called sonar using sound waves, um, 
you need a medium for the sound waves to travel through. Now you can use water or you can use air, but famously, space is not a medium. It is a vacuum and sound waves do not travel in space um, because the way sound waves work is they, um, they're compression waves. So electromagnetic radiation is its own thing. It's this combination of electromagnetic waves, electrical and magnetic waves that, um, are in <laughs> nice, um, are, uh, perpendicular to each other and they travel through at different frequencies that result in various electromagnetic waves. Visual is one of them. Um, radio is one of them x-rays is one of them. All of that is all electromagnetic radiation. That's one thing. Sound waves are a different thing. Sound waves are when I'm speaking into this microphone, what is happening is my voice is compressing the air that is hitting the microphone that is translating that into noise and out in the same way. So the only way we can hear each other is from air compressing and decompressing. And there's some cool stuff that you're able to do with that. There's been some awesome technology actually trying to use sound waves like in new ways, um, like weaponizing sound where you can really have a really compressed air pulse that's, I mean, that is sound technically and try to, you know, that will travel through and that could hit something. I've also seen a pretty cool demonstration of how to use sound waves to put out a fire because you get the compressed part, but then you also get this big vacuum of space. And basically what happens is all the air disappears from this one region, which puts out the fire. Um, again, these are sort of extreme examples, not something you could super build in your, um, in your house and yeah, poop inducing also a thing. But remember my philosophy, bodies are gross and squishy. So we don't talk too much about that. <laughs> but sound waves, that's how they work. You need that compression in that medium. Now you can travel through water in the same way that you compress the water and you extend it. It's going to be distorted. It's going to behave slightly differently. Um, but that's the medium. Now space is a vacuum. I know I've talked a lot about how there's dust and gas out there, but there is not enough of it to actually have a compression wave that's able to travel through space. So if they want to use sonar technology to try to detect Klingons, great in principle, but in space, you are in trouble. So um, we will be coming back to that. But sonar versus radar. Now, some people, they hear radar. How is that different? Um, that's using radio waves and bouncing those off. Now, like I said, they almost got away with it. If they were going to try to develop some sort of radar technology that would allow it to bounce off the Klingon ships and then back and be detected in some way, that's great. Except for the fact um, that the whole point of cloaking technology is that you are cloaked from electromagnetic radiation because light and being able to detect things and um, radio waves are a type of electromagnetic radiation. So even though it's the same principle of sort of bouncing a wave of some sort over into an object and getting that reflection back, the whole point of cloaking technology is that you are protected in the electromagnetic range from that. Um, if you want to use sound, that's great. That's another way of doing it, but you can't do it in space. So we will be coming back to this. <laughs> and uh, but until then, carrying on, the, they go to Pavo. And again, I actually, I loved this episode. I thought this was so straight up original series, like, um, you know, uh, away mission classic. Um, as Zidan pointed out, um, there were no red shirts to die. Sad, you know, but they throw out some pretty good call outs and shout outs to uh, us Trekkies, one of which being the singing plants, um, because Talos, I always say this wrong. It's Talos IV. That's the Star Trek planet that has the singing plants. And I think I may have a picture of that later. <laughs> but yeah, we'll come back to that as well. Um, but the whole idea when they go there, yeah, in space, nobody can hear you scream. That's the point. Um, you can see the tower in the background there. They talk about the whole idea that this planet has organisms and plants um, that are emanating at this frequency that creates this sound that this planet is putting out there, which sounds great and cool. And this huge tower that's naturally occurring crystal um, basically amplifies this whole signal. Um, we're kind of okay with this. All right. So we got to break it down in a few ways, though. One is that we're going to talk about how radio towers work. 
The other way is that we're going to talk about how resonance works. So the first one, we're going to talk about electromagnetic waves, like radio waves, and using radar, like they're kind of trying to talk about with discovering the Klingon ships. That's fine. Um, naturally occurring radio tower. <laughs> So the way radio towers work is that you have a huge antenna and what happens is, is that electrons travel up and down it and they basically send out these electromagnetic waves. Radio waves are the longest uh, wavelength in the electromagnetic spectrum. And so what they, that's why you need these huge towers like to receive them um, because you need that whole wave to be excited as you're going um, and to be able to detect them. It's a really crude explanation, but kind of the best that, that I can do it at this level. Um, I mean, I could, I could teach an entire class on it, but we're, we'll do the gloss over for this. Um, so you see this tower in the background. And again, while I'm watching this, my brain is thinking, okay, is this, are they trying to do sonar or are they trying to do radar? Because sonar, space, radar, radio waves. Um, this makes you think that it could be more radio waves. And again, the way it works would be this crystal would somehow be able to transmit uh, electromagnetic signals through this tower, which would emit a radio wave at whatever electromagnetic radiation is coming off of these plants. <laughs> and you can tell I kind of died at that explanation there um, because sound waves. All right, so if these plants are all singing, that's great, well done, um, that's possible. Oh, before I carry on to that, um, if this is a radio tower, this is also what made me think of it, is that there was an offhand comment that they had to transport 30 kilometers away because the crystal transmitter was interfering with their transporter beam. And we've talked about transporter technology in the past here, and that makes you think that it would be an electromagnetic tower and emanation uh, in radio waves if it's gonna be interfering with transporters. That logic kind of makes sense. So. Um, remember, we're all logical here. <laughs> uh, okay, so the transmitter is interfering with this transporter, um, which makes you kind of think more that it could be a radio tower. Again, also because they're talking about it being emanated into space, which would need to be a radio wave. Um, now, what she wants to do, the whole plan is to come here and link their communicators with this tower to boost this signal, this sort of um, radar, we'll call it, it will allow them to detect cloaked Klingon ships. Okay, we're good. Um, now, again, if the crystal has natural vibrating electrons, that's fine. It's working as a radio tower. That makes sense. You have a nice big antenna. You can transmit it. You get a big amplitude. That's fine. Um, now, when they get, let me see if I've got a picture of that. Um, oh, energy beings. Oh. We'll come back to that. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, so uh, putting in this signal into this tower, you I mean, they showed light pulsing through here. Now, light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum, so that's okay. Um, and they show it pulsing through at kind of a decent wavelength. So you could say that there could be some sort of energy transmittal going through this crystal, which would also be okay. Um, we're fine with that. Um, and now I want to talk about resonance because we're going to take another step back. And I'm sorry, this is because we're jumping between electromagnetic and sound. And there's lots to talk about, but it gets confusing. So remember, radar is radio waves, electromagnetic waves. This could be like a radio tower. This could be like radar in space to detect cloaked ships. Following that logic, we're okay with that. The other side of this is what they've said is that these plants are sending out sound. They're singing. There's like this harmonic resonance that's going on on this planet that hits this crystal and that gets amplified. So we're going to ignore the sound waves in space part and talk about this on the planet right now. So how does resonance work? Well, some of you may have seen, um, you know, rubbing fingers on like a wine glass um, starts to, if you get it at the right frequency, it starts to get really, really loud. That's because you've hit the resonant frequency of the wine glass. And now Z Dan, you've making me nervous because you're a sound engineer. So I may be a physicist, but I don't spend my time with sound because space. <laughs> um, so please jump in if I say anything incorrectly. Um, but 
resonant frequencies are a thing and it doesn't necessarily need to be sound waves. Um, they could just be other types of physical waves. Um, for example, the Tacoma bridge incident in Washington state is one of the most famous, um, examples of resonant frequency getting hit. So if any of you have hiked across like a sort of flimsy bridge, you can feel if you're hitting the right speed that it starts to sway more and more and more and you break step. When they talk about soldiers walking over bridges, they break step so they don't hit this amplitude and resonant frequency. Now, what happened with the Tacoma Bridge is that there was wind passing by, and that wind was just hitting it right at the um, resonant frequency. So it started doing this. You can think of a swing set too. It's another good example. And it just get more and more amplified and more and more amplified, and the whole bridge fell apart. So this is resonant frequencies are a thing. And they're great. Like you're able to really do some cool stuff. You can really amplify some things that would be hard to do otherwise. And that's kind of the concept they're utilizing here on Pavo. This idea that you have these singing plants and it could be as they're all singing, they're all at the same harmonic frequency. So they don't need to be exactly the same frequency. They could be hitting harmonics, but all that means is like, all right, imagine you're pushing a kid on a swing set and you, you know, you push and you're pushing at the right frequency to make them go faster and faster, but you could push twice as fast. It's just every other time you're not going to be pushing the kit. You'll just be pushing air. Um, but you'll still hit when you do push the kit, it'll be at the, the kid. <laughs> it'll be at the right, uh, frequency that it would make them go higher and higher on the swing. So that's another way of looking at it. So just because they're not at exactly the same sound doesn't mean that they're not at, um, resonant harmonic frequencies. So that's kind of the concept of this planet, that they're there and um, all of the organisms on this planet are all humming, all vibrating at this one frequency, giving off these sound waves. And then what happens is they hit this crystal and this crystal is vibrating. And if you're hitting that resonant frequency, Remember, sound waves are mechanical. They're compression of air and the decompression of air. Um, and as they hit the crystal, they're going to amplify it, and it will make that sound louder and bigger. But space <laughs> and air. This is our problem. This is the conflation of electromagnetic waves and sound waves. And um, like I said, could almost get away with it on either side. Either side. One side is air. Um, the other is cloaking technology. So, um, but we'll keep going. I did really like this shout out though, because they did mention, I mean, there were singing plants in the original series in Talos 4. Um, if you remember, they sort of make you feel, uh, yeah, uh, make you feel happy. Not even Spock is immune to the happy feelings that these plants produce. And that was kind of what happened, happened with Saru. So I felt like this was a really good shout out to some of the, um, landing party episodes of the original series. And speaking of which, going back to the picture I had earlier, um, just about these non-corporeal beings, it wasn't obvious if these are energy beings or spore beings, because now I just see spores everywhere. Thanks, Discovery. Um, but this could be just an energy being, which is fine. We have a lot of energy being friends in Star Trek. <laughs> Non-corporeal beings are a thing. And um, there was an episode, I had to write it down. Um, yeah, the Beta 12A entity from Day of the Dove in the original series. That was the one that made them like feel uh, that lived off of the angry feelings. And I kind of like that shout out, just the idea that like this energy being made Saru like not feel fear, which he's felt his whole life because that's how his species is. Um, so that was kind of touching and, and cool, but that's just my opportunity to geek out as a Trekkie. Um, so yeah, but going back to the crystals, um, let me see what else I've got here. Um, we have those, uh, and then, all right, so we're getting there. Yeah, you do remember that. Yeah. See, it all came back to me. I was like, Oh, who? no original series. Like there's lots of energy beings. And honest, I've got to say like, cause I love the original series, but I always watch like my favorite episodes. I'm really bad at like binging straight through the original series. Um, the way I remembered the energy being from Star Trek was from the Futurama Star Trek episode <laughs> um, where he's just the angry teenager. And then I was like, oh yeah, there was an original series episode for that. Um, so yeah, no, it all ties together at the end. Uh, but there's, you know, there's, 
there's non-corporeal energy beings throughout Star Trek the whole way. There's episodes of Deep Space Nine, there's episodes of Voyager, there's episodes of Next Gen for sure um, that have these non-corporeal beings, so we're okay with it. Um, so, like I said, this is the main thing that we needed to talk about in this episode, was this idea of radar versus sonar and electromagnetic waves versus radio waves. And bless their hearts, they almost got away with it because the issue with the sound waves is that sound doesn't travel in space. Physics. Physics rule can't happen. Don't do it. Everything else, if you're talking about the planet and this idea that you have a resonant frequencies, that everyone's sort of singing in harmonics, and then you have this crystal that will be at that resonant frequency and it amplifies the sound, that's fine as long as you're staying on the planet. Um, once you're using that in space to try to use like sonar to detect Klingon vessels, then you're in trouble. Um, but the other side is that maybe they're using it like radar Maybe that pulsing that's going up the crystal when they're sending up the signal and trying to communicate with Discovery, you know, they're using it to amplify their communicator signal. So that makes me think it's more electromagnetic radiation. And as I'm watching this, oh, hey, Mr. Voidy, welcome back. Um, so as I'm watching this, um, I'm thinking, okay, They've got the singing planets, they've got the resonance with the crystal, that's all fine, but really everything here is pointing to that this is an electromagnetic transmitter, that this is basically a big radio transmitter that they're talking about, that they want to maybe just bend the rules of cloaking technology, which is fine because cloaking technology is sci-fi. So even though we can't maybe see it in the visual, you could maybe say that in some part of the electromagnetic spectrum you can get away with it. Um, but you know, they're, they're pushing the boundaries there, unfortunately. And um, they almost get away with it. They almost, oh, so close. They so close get away with it. Um, and then this scene happens. And so for those of you who just joined, I saw I got a few more viewers popped in. Um, we're talking about the difference between radar and sonar in this episode of Star Trek Discovery. And this big crystal transmitter could be transmitting sound or it could be transmitting electromagnetic waves. The whole episode makes it seem like it's sound, but sound can't travel in space. So we're going to go with electromagnetic waves. They're using it like radar, like radio waves to find Klingon ships. All fine, on board. And then they get to the end of the scene and uh, end of the episode. And they're up on the ship. And the guy says, uh, well, we're not getting any more sound from the planet, only an electromagnetic wave. <sighs> okay, so they're talking, they, so they were like trying to detect sound from that crystal, which was a problem. And I need to watch it again to make sure, but this there's a conflagration here of sonar and radar, which is fine. It makes sense, it's not a problem. The whole point of me being here is that we can geek out about this together and love it and it's great and we're gonna talk about it <laughs> um, and we're just making it clear that there is a difference between sound waves and electromagnetic waves and you can learn some physics in the process so really we're all here to have a good time um that was the main thing i definitely wanted to talk about obviously for this um i do have a few more minutes i'm sorry that i came on late um but we could talk about some other things. If any of you had any questions about this, um, we can talk. I wrote down a few things. First of all, um, Pavo had uh, two moons, which was cool. One of them seemed super close, by the way. Um, if any of you have sort of, there's a lot of good sci-fi. There's some good sci-fi books that have to do with the moon getting really close to planets and what that would do and how that would screw up the gravity. Um, that one moon seemed pretty close to Pavo. Um, but hey, sometimes you just, you know, gravity works, man, and their gravity would balance out, and then you've got a third moon, and it's possible. Uh, we have detected planets with two suns, so we can get away with that. Um, Three-body problem makes it hard, but not impossible. And um, also the Kelpians, uh, Saru's race, can run at 80 kilometers an hour, which is impressive. That's car speeds. And I really liked that scene when he was running along the cliff. So that was cool. Um, and then the energy beings, how would that be? Um, we don't know. Like I said, I don't know if it was spores or just energy fields. Um, but again, I felt like this whole episode was just a giant love letter to like the original series 
away missions. So I was a big fan of it. Um, but there wasn't a ton of science other than the whole uh, singing plants and uh, and um, the radar versus sonar thing that was going on. So um, if anyone has anything else, then I will cut it out here. Uh, it's going to be a short one, but, you know, some of the episodes give us a ton of science. Thank you, Spore Drive. Other ones just give us some singing plants and a, and a transmitter. Um, but I will be back next week to do the same thing. We're going to talk about the mid-season finale, which should be awesome. And then my VODs are going to come back at the end of the month on the 30th. If you have any ideas for episodes, please feel free to hit me up. I've got some on dark matter. I've got some on dark energy. We're going to talk about Hubble and the expansion of the universe. Um, we're going to talk about lots of things. So I've got some some good ones. Oh, hey, Mingus, thanks for joining too. Um, so uh, yeah, I sorry if you missed it. This is a this is a short one, and it's at a weird time this week. You guys are. Uh, awesome for hanging out with me. Um, this whole thing will be posted. So, um, if you came in late, feel free to catch it. I know it was at a funny time. I'll also post it to my YouTube channel. Um, I have a few new followers. So, uh, Jedi AK 47, thanks for following righteous mule. Thanks for following. And then, uh, to Lauren for, uh, resubscribing, um, her prime subscription. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. And, uh, as always feel free to hit me up on Twitter. If you've got any questions about this, Radar, sonar, different things. That's basic. That sums up the entire episode. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining, guys. I will see you on the other side. And I will see you next week, 6.30 Pacific time, just like usual. So um, yeah, thanks again. And enjoy the mid-season finale. Yeah! All right. I'll see you later. See you next time.